You've got your coffee ready, you're clear on your to-do list, so you head over to your favorite AI chat box, ChatGPT, to help you knock off your task in record time. But your excitement quickly turns into disappointment as you see the dreaded ChatGPT is at its capacity warning. If this has ever happened to you, you know how annoying it is when you're trying to use ChatGPT to get some work done, but it's at capacity and you have no access to using the AI chat box. So in today's video, I'll be showing you an alternative tool which allows you to do most of the tasks that you can do on ChatGPT and there will never be a capacity warning. And the tool is called Playground. Now, Playground is also built by OpenAI, which created ChatGPT. But Playground is definitely not as popular as ChatGPT. And that's because I think ChatGPT just made it very easy for users to be able to play around with an AI um, chat box, even if they had no experience using AI. When you're using Playground, you need to have a little bit more of some background information and knowledge um, as to how to really tune and prompt the AI to get the best output. While on ChatGPT, the settings are already preset, so it's very easy for users to use it and get the outputs in which they need. But if you actually know how to use Playground correctly, in my opinion, you can actually get more powerful um, content just depending on your use case. Um, again, if you really know how to use it and tweak the settings in Playground. First thing that you need to keep in mind while using Playground is the model in which you'll be using. For 99% of your use case, you'll be using text DaVinci 003 if you're generating text such as short or long form copy. If you are trying to, <clears throat> if you're trying to translate natural language to code, then you can use Codex. I don't really have much experience using these um, specific models, but if you do, then this would be uh, the model in which you can choose. Now, once you choose your model, below that will be your temperature, your length, and some other settings that you will have to change. Now, your temperature is going to be how creative your content is. So essentially, the higher the temperature, the more creative your content will be. So for example, let's say I asked AI to write me five blog post titles for an article about how to start a podcast. And if I wanted to um, keep the temperature at zero, then most likely my output will be um, not as creative. So for instance, we got um, titles such as how to create a podcast, the essential guide of starting your own podcast, the ultimate checklist. So let's go ahead and run this example again. But for this instance, we'll increase the temperature to one. And now let's go ahead and click submit and see if there's a difference in the content which we get back. So in the first output, as you can see, it's a little bit more um, subjective. It's kind of straight to the point, the essential guide of starting your own podcast, how to create a podcast from scratch and so on. But if we uh, look at the second output, and this is the output in which we create, we increase the temperature, we get some more creative outputs. So the tools of the trade from idea to reality, how to find guests and secure interviews for your podcast. So we also get a little bit more uh, deeper in terms of not just when you're talking about how to start a podcast, but things that you may need to know when you're starting a podcast. Tips for making a professional podcast on a small budget, marketing strategies to optimize your podcast reach. So again, we get some more creative, a little bit more in-depth um, content when you increase the temperature. Now, when you're trying to generate content, it's going to be a trial and error approach when you're trying to find the right uh, temperature settings. But in my opinion, I think anywhere between 0 0.6 to 0 0.7, if you're creating um, short or long form copy, this is kind of the sweet spot because if you go all the way to one, sometimes you can get things that are sort of unrelated to which to what you would like to actually write about. And if you go all the way um, down to zero, then you just kind of get subjective content that's not really creative. So I think somewhere between 0 0.6 to 0 0.7, um, that's a really good space to be in when you're generating high quality short and long form poppy. Now below your temperature is going to be the max length. So this is going to be uh, or determine how long your outputs will be. So if you're generating titles like we just did, then the max length can be something that's a little bit lower. But if you're generating longer copy like um, articles or if you're generating blog post paragraphs and you want to increase your maximum length. And below that will be your stop sequences. You won't really be using this, but essentially if you want to tell the AI to stop at a specific point when it's generating um, outputs, then you can add a stop sequence. Below your stop sequence will be your top P. Now, I don't know exactly what the top P is. I did do some research and according to ChatGPT, the top P refers to the top P sampling method used in generative pre-trained transformers, which is a GPT models. This method is used to generate text outputs by selecting the most likely next word giving the input prompt. In Toppy sampling, the model calculates the probability of each possible word in the vocabulary and selects the top P. 
or the highest probability words, the model then randomly chooses one of these words as the next word in the output sentence. The idea behind this is to prevent the model from generating nonsensical or low quality responses by restricting the model's choices to a smaller set of high probability options. So essentially, it looks like it limits the AI in terms of that specific context so that you're getting a more higher quality content. And below your top P will be your frequency penalty. So this is um, allows you to decrease the model's likeliness to repeat the same line verbatim. So if you increase your frequency penalty, then you will get less. Um, it's less likely that you will get re repetitive um, content within your outputs when using the playground mode. So I would suggest that you increase the frequency penalty a little bit, um, especially if you're creating content where you don't really want the AI to just kind of follow a format or sound robotic. I do increase this to anywhere between between um, one to two or even sometimes to three in my outputs. But again, this is something that you wanna play around with for your specific use cases. And below your frequency penalty will be your presence penalty. This is how much to penalize new tokens based on whether they appear in the text so far. So as you increase this, you increase the model's likeliness to talk about new topics. So if you like the um, model to talk about more novel ideas within your outputs and this would be a good setting to play around with for the most part i kind of keep this at zero because if i'm generating content i want it to, the ai to kind of stay within one space and if this is too high then the ai can actually go out and generate content that's not related to what you're trying to write about and there's some other settings below this, but you probably wouldn't have to use those, so no need to worry about it. But essentially, if you're trying to generate content using the playground, it's essentially the same way that you would do it on ChatGPT. Once you've written your inputs, then you want to make sure that your cursor is towards the end of that sentence. You don't really want to leave any space in between because sometimes that uh, confuses the AI. Once you've entered your prompt, just go ahead and click submit. And as you can see here, um, the AI will start writing the content for you. Okay, so I asked it to write me a LinkedIn post about why working on home is good for mental health. As you can see here, we had a couple sentences, but when you're using the playground mode, you really wanna uh, be very intentional about your prompts and you wanna be as specific as you can within your input so that you're getting much better outputs. So instead, a better input would be write a 300 word minimum, in-depth, engaging LinkedIn post about why working on home, so why working from home is good for mental health and speak in the first person when applicable. So this was the first output in which we got back when we asked AI to write us a LinkedIn post about why working from home is good for mental health. And this was the second output in which we got back once we were a little bit more um, in depth and we were a little bit more specific by asking it to write a 300 word minimum in depth engaging LinkedIn posts. Uh, and speak in the first person. So as you can see, the content is much longer, but it's much more relatable um, to, to people because it actually speaks in the first person as well. And this is a much more um, uh, engaging piece of content that you can post on your LinkedIn that will definitely get, get you a lot more engagement compared to the first output. So when you're using the playground mode, you just wanna be as specific as possible when using the AI. And you also wanna play around with these settings to find which one works the best for the content which you're creating. But as you can see, it's very easy to use um, the playground mode. And if ChatGPT is at its capacity, I highly recommend that you give it a try. It can look a little bit intimidating um, from the outside, but once you actually start using it, it's very, very easy to use. And if you would like to access Playground, you need to create an open AI account. And then once you do so, just head over to Playground and you'll be able to start using it. But do keep in mind that this is a paid tool. So each time you generate content, you need to pay um, open AI. But the cost is very nominal. You pay about two cent for every 1000 token that you use and a thousand token is worth about 750 words. So for every 750 words that you generate, you pay about two cents. So it really doesn't add up unless you're generating a lot, lot of um, content. Um, but for the everyday user, you'll probably end up paying maybe five to $10 per month. If, if at that, um, you probably will pay less. But if you just use it when ChatGPT is at its capacity, then you really wouldn't be paying that much overall. So it is a great option to use if ChatGPT is not available or if you don't want to pay $20 per month for ChatGPT, you can use that $20 um, for your tokens on um, opening the AI's playground. And then you can just use the playground mode instead of using ChatGPT. Again, just figuring out whatever works best for you and the use case that uh, you have when using these AI language models. So that's the video for today. As always, I hope that you enjoyed it. Hope that you learned something new. If you did, don't forget to leave us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, stay well.